Hey guys, it's been a while. Was just supposed to be gone for my vacation, but for some reason I've fallen into a funk and find myself full of existential dread. Gee, wonder why I haven't been feeling as excited about doing anything, including making videos these days. Anyway, I came across another proof for a deity. Let's check it out. Human beings can do many amazing things. Some can run 26.2 miles without stopping. Others show remarkable courage in the face of great danger. Some can walk along a tightrope hundreds of feet above the ground. But there are certain things that are humanly impossible. Yes, there are things that we can't do, but we're always pushing the limits of what is possible. It used to be thought that running a mile in under four minutes was impossible until Roger Bannister broke that record. In the decades since, that time has been reduced again and again. What we think of as possible or impossible can change as our understanding of the world changes. It used to be thought that heavier than air flight couldn't happen, but that obviously has been shown to be possible. As we learn about the world, what we understand to be possible or impossible can change with that knowledge. 1,500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was the center of the universe. 500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was flat, and 15 minutes ago, you knew that people were alone on this planet. Imagine what you'll know tomorrow. Humans cannot walk on water unassisted. Dude, I'm Canadian. Every winter we can all walk on water. Except maybe those jerks in Vancouver. Jerks? Screw you, Tim. Humans can't give sight to the blind, instantly reattach severed ears with only their hands, or raise the dead. If ever such a person existed, his life would logically testify to the existence of a supernatural being. No, we don't need to default to supernatural deity to explain things we thought were impossible. If the impossible does happen, it means that it was... possible. So, we have to redefine our understanding of what is possible, even if we don't know how it occurred. If the miraculous healing you described was observed, we could claim all sorts of explanations. Perhaps the person who was healed while being touched somehow had DNA that was similar to a salamander, which are able to regrow in lost limbs. Perhaps medical advancements could result in the ability to accelerate and improve healing via tactical impressions. Perhaps even a deity is the cause, but we can't slot that claim in as the answer if we don't know. Perhaps this person who seemed to come back from an apparent death was given the Extremis Serum which, among other things, promotes rapid healing. Sure, nanotechnology like that is currently science fiction and not possible with today's knowledge, but is quite frankly more realistic than some of the goop she's been pushing. Seriously, don't go to celebrities for medical advice. As a side note, figuring out what can cause healing is exactly why controlled testing for things like hydroxychloroquine as a remedy for COVID-19 are needed. Yes, people have gotten better after taking it, but did taking it help the healing? As my wife explains it, if a woman has French toast for breakfast, then gets pregnant that night, that doesn't mean the French toast is what caused the pregnancy. That's what tests and studies are for. I hope it works. Any kind of relief would be welcome these days, but I don't have much faith that it will. Unbelievers understand the rationality of this argument. In fact, prominent atheist Dan Barker is on record as saying, if Jesus were to materialize and work any number of miraculous deeds, atheism, he indicated, would be disproven, and theism would be established as a fact. Well, since he doesn't cite sources, I had to find out what he was talking about. The best I got was a transcript from a debate where Barker was talking about the falsibility of science and religion. Basically, for something to be scientific, there has to be a condition that could prove it wrong. He was saying that if a deity did exist, and verifiable evidence was shown to prove that existence, then an honest atheist would have to follow where that evidence led. Theism to him, on the other hand, cannot be disproven, since it takes claims without the need of evidence, and since God is claimed to exist outside of our understanding, there is no observation that one could make to disprove a God, so all examples of falsifying one could be brushed away with mysterious ways. And yes, if evidence was found to show that a deity existed, we would have to follow that evidence. But outside of a book of claims, what evidence can you bring to the table? The truth is, the very proof that Barker and other atheists postulate was provided 2,000 years ago when God put on flesh and came to earth in the form of man. 
And he didn't merely claim to be God. He did what a reasonable person could expect if God were ever to prove His divinity on earth. He fulfilled precise prophecies and worked supernatural miracles, including coming back from the dead Himself. The life and works of Jesus testify to the existence of a supernatural being. Those are claims. It's claimed that your Savior did these things, but outside of your book of mythology, what evidence do you have that such miracles occurred? It used to be claimed that lightning was caused by the Norse god Thor using Mjolnir, but as visually exciting as that would have been, we no longer think lightning is caused by an intelligent being wielding a hammer because we have no evidence for one. Like I said, visually exciting, but we don't think that's how it really happens. Just a... just a coincidence. No! No, not at all! Well, I won't be needing this. A few years ago, renowned atheist Dr. Richard Dawkins was questioned in Australia on national television about his unbelief in God. Specifically, he was asked, what proof would change your mind? He quickly responded by saying, that is a very difficult and interesting question because, I mean, I used to think that if somehow, you know, great, big, giant, 900-foot-high Jesus with a voice like Paul Robeson suddenly strode in and said, I exist, and here I am. But even that, I actually sometimes wonder if that would... And then he was interrupted. Again, he doesn't cite sources, so I had to look around for the original quote and found the debate it was from. What he doesn't say is the interruption was from Cardinal Pell, the man Dawkins was debating that night, and the interruption you brought up was Pell saying, I think you were hallucinating. So, so what proof, by the way, would change your mind? It's a very, that's a very difficult and interesting question because, um, I mean, I used to think that, uh, that if somehow, you know, great big giant 900 foot high Jesus with a voice like Paul Ropes and suddenly strode in and said, I exist, here I am. Um, but even that, I actually sometimes wonder whether that would... I think you're hallucinating. <laughs> exactly. I agree. Even a believing cardinal understands that if we were to witness something that goes against our understanding of the world, our first assumption would be to question our own senses. People have been tricked into accepting miracles, especially if they already want to believe they could happen. Members of the Manson family believed Charles Manson could heal and bring dead animals back to life, and that he had the power to read minds. Just because he was claimed and believed to have these powers by his followers doesn't mean they actually happened. The mind can play tricks on us, making us accept things that aren't there or didn't occur. So, though Dr. Dawkins raises the possibility of the legitimacy of disproving atheism with a 900-foot-high hypothetical Jesus, he's rejected the historical, miracle-working, resurrected-from-the-dead Jesus who walked the earth 2,000 years ago. What historical Jesus? There's no evidence outside of the Bible that the Jesus you claim as your deity ever existed. Was there a guy who was nailed to a cross for claiming he's the incarnation of God and that people should follow him? I admit it's possible, so I wouldn't be shocked if it happened. Did such a person perform miracles, including coming back from the dead? Well, there's no evidence for such a thing, and it goes against what we understand about the natural world. If it did happen, we would need proof that such things occurred, and they were caused by divine powers. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. If the Jesus from your Bible did exist, and perform the miracles that he claimed to, you would expect other sources would record it. At one point, Jesus was claimed to have brought a multitude of dead back to life that walked down the streets in an event that was observed by many. You'd think this would have been noticed and recorded by the scholars at the time, but I haven't come across any mention of zombie hordes in downtown Jerusalem in any non-biblical histories. Sadly, such unreasonable unbelief is nothing new. How is it unreasonable? You've claimed that your deity took human form and performed many of these miracles before dying, then returning to life and flying away. What do you have to support those claims besides the claims themselves? Your book says that 500 people witnessed Jesus, but 
I could say that 600 people witnessed me performing similar miracles proving that I'm your deity. That's 100 more people I claim witnessed me. Does that make it any more likely? Without anything to back it up, you would dismiss my claims as easily as I dismiss yours. Even some in the very presence of Jesus in the first century who testified to the supernatural feats that He worked rejected Him. Even though they admitted to the many miracles that He worked, they plotted to put Him to death. Isn't that a good thing? According to your mythology, Jesus had to be executed because God, who was Jesus, needed to die for our sins, even though it wasn't a permanent death, so not really a sacrifice. If people didn't crucify Him in your story, then He couldn't have died the way He was supposed to. And how do we know it was their choice to plot his death? It isn't like the narrative says that God hadn't interfered with the free will of humans to put on a good show before. As I understand it, the Pharaoh was admitting to his mistake after just a few plagues, but God had apparently set up all seven, so he hardened Pharaoh's heart so that the show could go on. I suppose it shouldn't be surprising that many will reject the Lord God today, despite the evidence for His existence. Well, bring the evidence then. Saying a guy existed two millennia ago who did miraculous things is a claim, not evidence. Bring me something that can prove your deity is there, and I'll have to follow where that evidence leads, even if it goes against what I really think about the world. Show my 